Hi friends, this is Peter Swart from Grace Covenant Ministries and uh, this is our first session on Deliver Us From Evil and uh, I want to share with you a journey that I took uh, over the last nine months um, and I discovered a, a lot of stuff in my life. I was in a transition with uh, some things that, that have happened in my life and uh, I want to encourage you through this and I, even though I preach the gospel and I see the power of God manifest, I prophesy, I see people healed, I see people delivered from all kinds of things in my ministry. There was something that held me back and um, I was uh, um, struggling with, with something. And as I travel through churches uh, in, in North America and, and other places in the world, I discover that um, there is so many Christians that struggle with this same issue and they are looking for answers. And uh, I discover that they uh, uh, know that they are forgiven uh, past, present, and future. And they know that the Father loved them. And that is still that there is something that holds them back. Things that, they, that, that, that as if they are bound in an area, it's like as they are stuck in an area, it's, the confidence is gone. I see fear. I see depression. I see hopelessness. I see people frustrated. Um, in many areas in their lives and I just want to take you through this so in this session I there is definitely something that we need to overcome now the first thing that I want to say to you Jesus defeated the devil 2,000 years ago on the cross he brought he draw all judgment upon himself um, he, he broke the power um, of Satan the um, he broke uh, 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 he, he, he was nailed to the cross and he took the punishment he became the sacrificial lamb that took away the sins of the world. Um, we were in Christ when he died. Um, he rose from the dead victoriously. We were in him. He seated down on the right hand of the Father. We are in him. And we know these not we know this this knowledge. We have knowledge of this. Uh, people confess these scriptures. Um, and they and they know it, but it's as if there is something that there is that they struggle with. And I come down on a word in the Bible. Um, that that really caught my attention, and uh, this word is poneros in the Greek, and it is translated uh, as, uh, as sometimes as evil and sometimes as wicked. I begin to look into this word, and this word poneros means labors, uh, works, toiling with annoyances and hardships in the heart. It, it troubled the heart, and it is actually the very thing that hardens the heart. And if we read um, uh, in, in uh, uh, Hebrews 3.12, you will discover that the writer to the Hebrews say, um, uh, Brethren, beware lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief departing from the living God. Now, in the first place, what you need to understand is, is that they... Um, uh, he he is writing to to um, he is writing to believers. Um, he's writing to um, people who knows um, who knows the gospel. Uh, you know, he's writing to people who have accepted Jesus as their Lord. He is, uh, uh, and these people want to return back now to the Jewish system uh, on the Jewish beliefs, and he is saying to them. Um, Beware lest the evil heart is warning them of unbelief um, departing uh, in you, uh, develop in you. And that word that he used there for evil is poneros, which means labors, um, uh, uh, toiling. And that is birthed uh, at the Garden of Eden. This is when the foundation of the world were laid. When um, Adam, who was enjoying the quality of God's life, living in, uh, with God in close relationship, was deceived into, you will become like God. He ate from that tree, and in that moment, his nature changed, his belief system changed, he missed the mark, and from that moment on, he began to toil and labor. Um, he was he fall into self-effort, which means to improve what God has already perfected because his belief system was, was now affected. Jesus came back as the second Adam, and what Jesus does is, is that he, he, he took that nature to the cross, 
he killed it and he restored man, he redeemed man back. Now, we have to overcome that. And then I see that even though Christians know that their sins are forgiven, know that the Father loved them, I see that they struggle still in their lives and there's something that they need to overcome. And I want to go to the root of this and that we deal with this. Now, the first passage that I want to read to you in the Bible is in 1 John 2, verses 12 to 14. And he says there, um, my little children, I write to you because you are sin your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. And I write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. There is that word again, wicked. That word in the Greek is poneros, meaning labors, toiling. That means that uh, uh, the, the belief system of the heart that was programmed to perform, to have behavior modification, that is in self-effort, um, which is the elementary principle of the world. That means they have overcome that. And that means they have entered into the rest of God now. They are absolutely resting in the finished work of Jesus Christ. They know now who they are in Christ and they are strong. So he say there, you have overcome the wicked one. Then he say again, I write to you little children because you know the Father. Um, I write to you fathers because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you. And you have overcome the wicked one. First John 2 verse 12 to 14. So that this is today our introduction. I want to lay this foundation. That there is something that you need to overcome. What is it that we, that, that we need to uh, overcome? And uh, the, the reality is, is that I see even though people are forgiven. Uh, people know that Jesus has finished, um, uh, 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 finished the, the work on the cross. But there is still something in them. Their conscience is still being bound by things. Now, if you don't have this problem and you are absolutely established in who you are in Christ Jesus and you know who you are in Christ, you, you don't have to listen to this teaching today. <laughs> now, first of all, I want to explain the heart. The word heart in the Greek is kardia. And it exists of two words. You spell it K-A-R. The first one is kar. And then D-I-A, dia, kardia in the Greeks. And it, uh, it exists. Kar means the center and the source of your whole being, where you act from. And, uh, and dia means to act from or to export from. So kardia is that part of your being where you automatically act from. It's from the center and the source, where all the thoughts and all the emotions and all the beliefs come together in one place in you as a human being. Um, and the, the, the problem of that is it is very powerful because on the end of the day, you are going to do what your heart is programmed for. It's a natural flow. It's the passion of your whole. It becomes passionate. You're going to do it automatically. It doesn't matter how hard you try to renew your mind. You're going to do what your heart is established in. You're just going to do it. You're not going to get away from it. And, and you can go to all the self-improved uh, seminars. You can, uh, uh, can bind and lose devils and you can break curses. You, you can do all those kind of things. On the end of the day, what is in your heart is going to control you. And here's the thing is, what he say here in, in, in Hebrews 3.12, he say, departing from the living God, he says, if your heart is programmed to labor and work, with other words, to perform and, with, and, and to, to have behavior modification, a religious facade that which you develop on the end of the day, the problem with that is your own heart begin to work against you your own hard work against you and and that is the problem and many christians don't even see it and they fight the devil and say there must be something wrong with me maybe god don't love me maybe i've done something horribly wrong there's voices in them that say to, that, that is in them and say you don't deserve to be blessed you don't deserve um to be healed it's because their heart is programmed in this uh, um, uh, cardia in, in uh, Romans 10.10 10, Paul says 
with the heart we believe unto righteousness. So with the heart we believe. The heart is like Bertie Britt says, the faith machine. Um, it's, 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 faith is not something that, that, that you develop or, or work on or establish in your own ability. Faith is something that happens to you. Um, faith is uh, the more that you look in, in, into the grace of Jesus Christ and more you come to the understanding of the grace of Jesus Christ, faith happens with you. And therefore, he, he say here to the young man, in, in John say to the young man, you have overcome the wicked one because the word of God abides in you. Now that word is not just a little scripture. Many people quote many scriptures. He says the word abides in you. The word of God abides in you. That means uh, uh, Jesus is the word. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and in him was life and the life was the light of man. And Jesus says if you abide in me and I in you, he says, you will bear much fruit. So he says, you have overcome, you have overcome the wicked one, the, that system, the, the one who wants to put you into works and labors, that you lose your absolute rest, that your heart become troubled, that you, that you, that you uh, um, struggle uh, 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 and with hardships in this life. He says, you have overcome that one because you are resting in the Logos, the logic of, the God, of God. And the logic of God is summed up in Jesus Christ and His finished work and what He has done. So what needs to happen with you is you need to overcome every thought, every idea, every belief in you that says to you, you need to perform. You need to perform for acceptance from man, acceptance from, 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 um, uh, not only from a man, but from God. You need to perform and, and, and uh, to, to make it in this life, to survive in this life. Here's what I want to say to you. Your heart is not designed to labor, to have a belief system that you have to perform. Um, uh, um, uh, the law is, is identity by ability. Grace is identity by resting in the, per, uh, the finished work of Jesus Christ or the perfection of Jesus Christ. So we will talk about renewing of the mind too, but this is so important that you understand this. That you come to the conclusion and the absolute revelation what Jesus has done for you. Now, here's what is really important about this is that the Holy Spirit, um, the Holy Spirit is the very power of God in your life, working through your life. And the Holy Spirit cannot agree with beliefs that is contradicting what Jesus has done, that is contrary to the finished work of Jesus Christ. He will, the Holy Spirit will never leave you nor forsake you. He will always be with you. But He cannot agree. If you have beliefs in your heart, you need to understand that Jesus says, He says, He who believes in me, streams of living water will come from His belly. Some translations say, from your heart. And He says, This He say about the Holy Spirit, which did not come yet because Jesus was not glorified yet. Now, Jesus was glorified when He overcome uh, um, the, the fallen man on the cross rose from the dead. He was glorified. And now the Holy Spirit can, the Bible say that the Holy Spirit um, will, Jesus says, when he come, he will glorify me and he will take what belongs to me and make it known to you. So you need to understand that the Holy Spirit cannot agree with beliefs in our hearts. Many Christians say, where's the power of God? Why don't we see healings? Why don't we see the, 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 a move of God? Uh, and they pray and they beg God to come with a move into the city and we pray wrong instead of praying for revelation knowledge and that the Holy Spirit begin to enlighten our hearts and begin to show us what we have or what we can do in Christ because the power of God don't have to come anymore. The power of God have arrived when the Holy Spirit was poured out on all flesh. Listen, all flesh. He's all over the world. He's functioning in the world. 
He is here. He's living. If you are a believer, if you believe in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit is living in you. He's already inside of you. He's wake. He is trying to convict you. And what the Holy Spirit is not going to do, He is not going to agree with beliefs that, that you think you have to perform and live holy in your own ability and, and uh, uh, try to, to become something in your own ability, you block him. It hardens your heart. It, 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 your heart is programmed to think wrong. And, and so the Holy Spirit cannot flow through that. So, but what the good news is, is that the Holy Spirit, Jesus, is when he comes, he will convict you of righteousness. And of judgment, judgment because Satan is just in or the prince of darkness and he's cast out. But of righteousness, that means he will convict you of saying to you that you cannot work for your righteousness. But hey, listen, you've received the free gift of righteousness. Instead, in reality, it means that you have been declared innocent. He, innocent. he will keep on convicting you, telling you that you have been declared innocent. By the finished work of Jesus Christ. He will con keep on convicting you that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Because the moment that you stop working for righteousness and believe that you have righteousness as a free gift. That moment, the hardness of your heart begin to fall off the heart. The stony heart begin to break down and fa fall down. And your heart come into rest. Because when you work, He rests. And when you rest, he work. And this is our first teaching today. I've been laying a foundation yet. We will go on in, in session two. And I want you to follow me on Facebook. And uh, I, I will teach these short, uh, do these short teachings to help you. And we are going to get from tomorrow, get more closer to the root of our problem. And, and I'm going to trust that the Holy Spirit will help you. That you overcome, that you overcome. You come to that place that, that you are a father. Uh, that you know him who is from the beginning. That means you have an intimate relationship with the Father. God bless you. Have a great day.